So today I want to talk to you about spiritual entrepreneurship, specifically if you're struggling with sales or marketing in your business. So today I want to talk to you about spiritual entrepreneurship, specifically if you're struggling with sales or marketing in your business. So often I see spiritual entrepreneurs really having a lot of hangups around receiving money, charging money, exchanging money for services, or any form of the sales or marketing process in their business. And so first I want to say that you do not have to start a business. As a spiritual teacher, healer, lay worker, and messenger, you can give your gift away for free and you can, you know, work a different job to pay your bills and then do something that just allows your message to get out there for free. You know, you can start a podcast for 20 something a month and put it out there every single day for the masses and never have to charge a penny for any services. And if that's what you're feeling called to do, that is perfect for you. And that may even be likely where you started out. A lot of spiritual entrepreneurs, they start out just with a little side hustle, but then begins to take on a life of its own because they recognize that they're feeling called to do that full time because it's really energizing them from the inside out. They're inspired. They're getting the downloads. They're following the intuitive guidance and it's all leading them on this road of entrepreneurship and taking their side hustle to something more full time so they can do it fully. They are recognizing that it is not in the highest and greatest good for them to be split energy where they're doing one thing with their life as far as paying the bills with a different job or career and yet their passion lies in something else that they're only devoting a little bit of time to. And so many of them are being called to follow their purpose-driven mission and allow spiritual entrepreneurship to be the vehicle of which they share their healing gifts, their wisdom, and their message with the world. So if this is you and you find yourself on the road to spiritual entrepreneurship, remember, this is your choice. You don't have to be an entrepreneur if you have a problem charging money or a hang up around sales or marketing. But if you do want to be an entrepreneur and you do want uh, to have what you create be the vehicle for transformation for others, then you actually have to embrace the sales process, the marketing process, and all of the 3D strategy that goes along with that. Because the whole point is to actually work with people in your program, enroll clients, enroll students in your program so that you can help them achieve the transformative results that you know you can facilitate for them. So if this is resonating with you and you are being called to use entrepreneurship as the vehicle to move your mission forward and you feel icky around sales or you feel reluctant to actually charge for your services or you don't know how to charge for your services or you're you know, really feeling a disconnect when it comes to marketing and sales, then this is something that you really have to check in with because you're not going to be able to grow a business unless you embrace revenue generating activities. Okay. So I see a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs that have huge resistance around revenue generating activities. At some point you have to embrace this process sooner than later because you are running a business. You're not running a hobby. And this doesn't mean that you still can't give out a ton of information for free for everybody that cannot afford your services because there's a reason why you have a hang up. Um, and sometimes that hang up is imposter syndrome because you don't really value the services um, or the gift or the transformation that you bring to the table. So sometimes there's some imposter syndrome to clean up. And sometimes you feel as if charging money or building a business, even though that's what you're feeling called to do is greedy. And so I always recommend you leave with generosity in your business first and foremost. 90% of the content I create, including the video you're listening to right now and watching right now is free. 90% of my content that I create is free. Only about 10% of my content I actually charge for. And so I have both available in my company. I have free resources for everyone that is not at the place where they're ready to invest in their personal or spiritual or business growth. And then I have a ton of free resources for people that are not yet at that place. And so I always 
like to lead with generosity. Free masterclasses, free podcasts, free videos, you name it, free live events. But you do have the right to pursue a career path that is in alignment with your soul that you are feeling called to create without guilt, without feeling greedy, and without feeling like you're taking advantage of somebody because last time I checked, nobody was forcing anybody to sign up with you. And so when you can come full circle in that and fully own that you have a right and in my opinion, an actual obligation to be seen and to be heard and to share your message and your gift with the world. And if that's calling you to quit your nine to five or quit your corporate gig so that you can pursue this full time, because that's where you're going to make the highest impact and the, be in service at the highest level, then that's where you should, uh, that's what you should follow in my opinion, right? And this is, something that you have to check in with yourself. If you take the road of entrepreneurship, you have to be willing to embrace uh, generating revenue generating activities, which means signing up new clients or signing up new students for your programs. And if you have a hang up around that, then that's going to be impossible actually for you to grow a business. So I just wanted to throw this out there because this is a hang up that I see quite a bit. There's lots of um, lots of belief systems flying around in relation to receiving money or abundance in relation to spirituality and things like that. And in my opinion, it is actually a disservice not to share your gift with the world in the way that you are being called to share your gift in the world. When I think about all the extra content that I get to create and the millions of people I get to reach by doing things like being on the radio um, or soon uh, an upcoming documentary and hiring people for my team, such as publicists and stuff like that, to move the message forward. It would be a huge disservice if I just played small and stayed in my real estate career my whole life because it provided me a level of comfort but was not in alignment with my mission and I just only, you know, popped in and out of my other business, a little here and a little there, but never all in. I am of the highest and greatest value with my mission going all in on it. And yes, that requires money coming into the business to sustain and grow the organization and move the mission forward. And so we're moving into a phase of conscious entrepreneurship, spiritual entrepreneurship, conscious brands, and coming into alignment with our true value systems and what it is we want to create in the world, what it is we want to share in the world, who we want to collaborate in the world. We're moving more and more in the direction of pure alignment. And if you are not in alignment with marketing and sales because you feel guilty, or because you feel like you're greedy, or because you feel like you're not worthy or good enough to charge for what you're doing, then you have to recognize that those are ego-based, ego-driven judgments and perceptions. Because your soul is on board with however you want to express yourself and however you want to create, and your soul is actually guiding you in the direction that you signed up to go. And so if you stay in soul alignment and you follow your intuitive nudges, you can't go wrong. The ego may pop in and try to steer the train once in a while. And that's why heightened awareness is key in order to grow a soul aligned business because we all have ego to some degree. And when that pops up and you start to put money or you start to put external factors ahead of your vision and your why and your calling and your mission, and you start leading based off of personal gain instead of what's in the highest and greatest good and what's going to make the biggest impact. This is what you got to look out for if you want to grow a soul aligned business. Making money is not the problem. That's not the part that is going to quote unquote steer you off your path or make you greedy or um, quote unquote evil or whatever. Money is just a form of exchange. And so the more you recognize the real ways in which you can uh, get derailed by growing a business and you are 
hyper-focused and aware of those and you continuously call yourself back to center so you can lead from alignment. That's how you grow a soul aligned business and you can be abundant. You can be rich. You can build six figure, multiple six figure, seven figure businesses. And there are plenty of spiritual uh, teachers and healers out there that are doing exactly that, including myself and my students. This is the path that they are on. This is the path that you can be on if you choose. And think about all of the things that you're going to be able to create from that place of being abundantly supported on your mission work versus hiding and playing small and avoiding growth and expansion within your business and your company.